So benign prostatic hyperplasia goes by a few names. Most people call it BPH, some people call it BPE, some people call it BPO. That's all the same thing. Your prostate is, I describe it as like a donut that surrounds the tube that you pee from. And as that enlarges, it pinches off the tube that you pee from and it makes your bladder work harder. So you have trouble emptying your bladder. And it can show up in lots of different ways, but mostly it's getting up at night, having a stream that's not as strong, feeling like you have to push to go or you have to wait to go and your stream starts and stops. And it happens to men usually over 50. Um, and uh, every year you get older, it's more likely to happen. So your prostate's located down in your pelvis and you would never know it was there because it doesn't really have its own set of nerves that you can sense. So the prostate surrounds the urethra and as it grows, it narrows the diameter of the urethra. So basically the channel that you pee through gets narrowed and that increases gradually over time. We think bigger prostates cause more uh, constriction of the urethra, but also it's the shape of the urethra that matters or the prostate. We don't really know what causes BPH. We know risk factors for BPH. One of them is age. If you have family members with BPH, your risk is increased of having BPH and it's a testosterone dependent disease. So we know it develops over time and is generally in men over 50. So you'll know you have BPH much before your doctor knows or, or your primary health provider will know that you have BPH. You'll notice generally that you're getting up a little bit more at night, that you might be having more frequency during the day. Urgency can also be part of this and that when you go, your stream is not as strong and you may have to strain to go or wait a long time to get started. And if those things are happening and they're not bothering you, that's totally fine. But if those things are starting to bother you and affect your quality of life, then that's what we wanna hear from you. And so BPH is a benign disease. That's what the B in BPH stands for. Um, but when it starts to bother you and affect your quality of life or, or the things that you choose to do the day, that's when it's a good time to um, approach your practitioner. So it's really important to know the difference between BPH and prostate cancer. And that's what your uh, primary care provider or your urologist will talk to you about. So they happen in the same place, but they're very different diseases. So BPH is a benign disease and it causes symptoms. And so we treat it to help a person have less bother and a better quality of life. And so when you're diagnosed with PPH, you'll be asked questions and you'll have a physical exam uh, and potentially blood work, depending on some factors. Once you're diagnosed, then really it's how much it's bothering you and how much is affecting your life. We'll talk about lifestyle modification. We'll talk about medication and potentially surgery. All those things are valid in different people, depending on the size of their prostate, the severity of their uh, symptoms and how much it's bothering them every day. So lifestyle modifications that we recommend would be fluid restriction, primarily after supper and into the evening. Um, caffeine reduction, uh, treatment of constipation, and weight loss. So medications have been around for BPH for many years and generally they're very well studied and very well tolerated with patients with side effects that are acceptable to most men. So we start first with a medication that relaxes the muscles at the top of the prostate and so opens the channel and lets the flow be better. Um, if that doesn't work, we have medications that shrink the prostate and conversely we have medications that relax the bladder. And so in some combination of those medications, we're often able to um, treat the patient's symptoms and have them tolerate the medications well. So it's really interesting. This whole field of BPH is changing every year. There's many minimally invasive surgeries now, but basically when we say that, we mean that there's no incision and they're done via the urethra. So a lot of those surgeries are actually day surgeries and um, patients are able to go home and resume their normal activity fairly soon. Maximally invasive surgery is what we mean with an incision or sometimes done by the robot. Those surgeries are done a lot less commonly now that we have so many options minimally invasive. So we don't know how to prevent BPH. There's some theories that having a healthy fiber rich diet may help prevent this, but I often tell my patients it's a disease of success because you only get it as you get older. So, um, it's not a disease people want to have, but it means that we're worrying about your quality of life as you get older and trying to make it better each day. So if there's one point that I could really emphasize today, it would be that the symptoms we've talked about, peeing often, getting up at night, having frequency and urgency and a slow flow, are symptoms of an enlarged prostate. 
Those are very rarely symptoms of prostate cancer. And prostate, that's why prostate cancer screening is so important, which is done by a blood test. So if you're concerned about that, I encourage you to see your primary care practitioner, your urologist or your radiation oncologist to discuss it. BPH is actually not preventable in any way that we know, but it's a very treatable disease, um, which is common.